Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is a tarot reading for Alpha Centaurian star seeds. Of course, you are more than welcome to, to to watch and hang out. If you are not Alpha Centaurian, there could always be messages in this reading for you. But I am specifically tuning into my Alpha Centaurian frequency, and a few things before I jump in. I have never really talked about the Alpha Centaurians before. And there's a little bit of a story about how I came to connect with this energy right now, today. So I've actually <laughs> been kind of blocked from my Alpha Centaurian aspects. And that's very funny because I have had them in the back of my head like ever since I woke up actually because you know if you watch a lot of my readings you know that I'm very very closely connected to Hadar you know which is Beta Centauri right Beta Centauri and there is this very interesting connection between the Alpha Centaurians and the Beta Centaurians also known as the Hadarians right because they're neighboring triple star systems they're both triple star systems next to each other and there has been you know interplay between those two systems and this whole time when I have been really exploring the Hadarian energy, <laughs> I have also been getting memories. I have been recovering memories from a place that I didn't know. It felt sort of um, connected to Hadar in some way, but I knew it wasn't from Hadar or Beta Centauri energy. That was something different. And I've had, the, had these memories come through and I've always had Alpha Centauri kind of come up and I've even in the past like confused the Alpha Centauri and the Beta Centauri systems and thought they were like one system and had a whole weird confusion thing going on. Um, so anyway, this all adds up to I have been tuned into the Alpha Centaurian vibe this whole time and I just never knew it and there was something blocking me from really connecting the dots or from really realizing how strongly this Alpha Centaurian vibe is like how important it is for me and how I've been connected all along but I have been blocked. It, it's like my Alpha Centaurian self couldn't see itself. My Alpha Centaurian self couldn't see itself. Now I don't know if this is going to be a common thread for many Alpha Centaurians or if it's just me but I definitely wanted to put that out there because highly possible that others could resonate with this. And so before I get to the card reading just, just to see like what wants to come through for Alpha Centaurians whenever you watch this, this is absolutely a timeless reading. I wanted to just share a little bit more about my my memories from Alpha Centauri. So the first one is on a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. So there's the three stars in the Alpha Centauri system, um, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Alpha Centauri Proxima, which I'm pretty sure, so Proxima is the smaller of the three stars, and I'm pretty sure it is the closest star to our solar system, right? That's why it's called Proxima. It's the closest star. And um, it's interesting that I have a memory from there because the little bit that I've read about Alpha Centaurians, it seems like most of people's memories or like when people do, you know, regression therapy, they typically seem to recover memories and frequencies from the civilization that was orbiting or is orbiting um, Alpha Centauri B. That seems to be the hub of the civilization. But I have... Um, this one memory coming through from a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. So this could be quite different from what we have really remembered so far. So it has nothing to do with technology or any of that. It's just a really brief memory, but it tells me a lot about what my lives on that planet were like. I don't know what the planet was called, but anyway, I am just standing. Um, I have, I'm kind of very thin. I'm not very tall. My skin is kind of gray. Everything is kind of gray with this whole memory. Everything is kind of gray. Um, I'm standing in, in a field and the field is like rolling hills go all the way to, to the horizon. There are no trees in sight. There's nothing in sight except this grass, this, this prairie, um, this rolling prairie. Um, but the grass is kind of like medium tall, <laughs> like maybe up to my knees. Um, and it's it's very gray. It's kind of like a gray green, gray blue green, a kind of gray blue green color. Um, very washed out. Everything is washed out, presumably because Proxima Centauri is a kind of smaller star, which I think don't quote me on this, but I think it's um like a, a blue blue tinted star. So everything is kind of like the colors aren't like we see on Earth 
with our human vision, right? Everything is washed out and very gray. Like that, that is like an overwhelming thing here. I'm not in a bad way. Like this is a very like beautiful memory and it is very peaceful, peaceful for me, but it is not at all like the earth vibe where everything is very vibrant. This is like, um, an overwhelming sense of just wanting to dissolve myself, wanting to dissolve myself. Um, it's so, it's such an interesting feeling, but it is very, very strong in the memory. And the sky is also like a light gray. Um, and there are some clouds and I, I do see that there are some like little structures near me. I think I was traveling. I was like nomadic. I was a nomadic person traveling with a very small group of family. Um, I, I, in the memory, like I, re I know that there are herds nearby. And so we're nomadic following the herds of these large furry creatures. <laughs> um, maybe something like something similar to like a woolly mammoth almost. Um, but without tusks. Anyway, <laughs> we have like small, small little structures nearby and I am just looking out on this kind of gray world and thinking, feeling how beautiful it is. And the strongest part of this memory isn't anything that I can see or even what I look like. It is how the planet feels, how the planet feels. And it is almost like overwhelming how strong I can feel the the consciousness of the planet, like the vibe of the planet. Um, it's stronger than anything I've ever felt from Gaia. Presumably most of that is because of how much more tuned in I was to the planet. Um, I don't necessarily think it's because this planet has like a stronger consciousness than Gaia. It, I, I think it's just the way I lived, right? Um, the way I lived my entire life was a, was about dissolving my ego, essentially dissolving my ego and just becoming more in tune with the planetary consciousness, the collective consciousness. It was like, I just looked out on the landscape and I could feel the vibrations of the entire collective. Like, my entire life and the entire life of my my people, my tribe of people, it, it was all about becoming closer and closer and closer and more and more dissolved, more and more dissolved, dissolving into the planetary consciousness. It was um, this overwhelming desire to dissolve into unity. And I think that might be the root of why I've had trouble, like why my Alpha Centaurian aspect has had trouble recognizing itself, seeing itself, because apparently uh, <laughs> my at least some of my lives there, right, when I lived in this one culture anyway, was all about dissolve the, the dissolution of the self. Very strange. <laughs> like my human self thinks this is very strange, right? And I can just feel the, the, the pulse of the consciousness of the planet. And I can feel the consciousness of the other beings on the planet, um, both, you know, the, the people and the animals and just desperately wanting to release my ego and dissolve into it. it it's so hard to explain. And like the pulse of the consciousness of the planet was like an ever-present thing. I was never disconnected from it. Never. It, it was like just moving with the tides of the planetary consciousness and that dictated everything. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> so the other memory is entirely different. I think it's likely on a different planet, probably um, on one of the planets where most of the Alpha Centaurian memories seem to come from around Alpha Centauri B. Um, this is like, I feel um, a completely different civilization, a completely different situation, a completely different time. Um, there had, there, it's, it's like a time of war. There has been an invasion. Um, and I am in a work camp. I'm a prisoner of war in a work camp and I'm there with my friends. Interestingly, I'm there with several people that I know from earth <laughs> who I also knew then and uh, we escape, right? Um, and I just remember sitting in this, in this work camp. Um, I guess I was like allowed a break, right? To eat, um, sitting there going, this is it. I just have to make, I, I had this very, strong feeling of, I just have to make do with this. I have to become okay with this. I just have to dissolve myself into this. I just have to accept this and make um, make the best of it that I can, right? Um, I, I was like, I can't just give up. I have to find a way to um, make myself small enough to be okay with being in this prisoner of war work camp. But then my friend comes up and she's like, we gotta, we gotta escape. We gotta run. We gotta escape. We gotta run. And then, you know, there's this whole, um, I remember, recovered this memory in a dream, so the visuals are not exact to what it looked like in Hadar. A lot of time when I recover past life memories in a dream, um, I'm using visuals from this life, but yet the energy in the situation is basically what happened. So, you know, there's this whole process of escaping and running and running and running. And that's basically the end of that. It was running and running and running and running and running <laughs> for a long time after that. And then the memory kind of ends. So that's what I've got so far. Let's see what wants to come up. Three of Pentacles. Teamwork. <laughs>
And interesting, okay, on this card we have Metatron's Cube coming up. Before I started this reading, I was really looking at my Archangel Light Codes deck and I was wondering if the Alpha Centaurians have a, a specific connection to the Archangels. And that, that now that I say that's kind of strange, right? Because I don't know if it's really fair to say that any being has a stronger or weaker connection to the Archangels because the Archangels are everywhere, connecting, connecting with everyone all the time, right? But perhaps the Alpha Centaurians, or at least some of them, had a specific practice of connecting to the Archangels. It's just, it, that's too much of a coincidence. I'm definitely called here to notice the connection to the Archangels, specifically Metatron here, specifically Metatron. So let's see what else comes out. This Three of Pentacles, right? It's this card of teamwork, which makes a lot of sense given what I just described from my own memories of this almost unbalanced, for me anyway. I don't know if, if you know, this like really unbalanced thing of dissolving the self um, in order to be of service to the collective, if that's a common thing for Alpha Centaurians or if it's just me, right? But <laughs> What I am pretty sure for the Alpha Centaurians in general is that there is this strong awareness of the collective and this, of course, there's always this thing about technology with Alpha Centaurians and this desire to use a technology for the good of all, right? And I feel like this is playing, this is like indicating that um, because I am kind of getting a sense that more Alpha Centaurians are going to be waking up. This includes like starseeds who have already woken up to many of their starseed connections and just maybe now like going, wow, kind of maybe like me going, wow, how did I never realize uh, that I was also connected to Alpha Centauri, right? And also people who have never never had any interest and never even knew about starseed stuff waking up to the first time to their Alpha Centaurian connection. And to me, like this is going to have something to do with the various technological advancements that we're going to have on Earth over the next few decades. Specifically using advanced technology in an applied way to improve the lives of everybody, right? To improve our lives. Seven of Swords. Okay, I'm going to, that's a different thing. I want to finish what I'm saying here about technolo technology. So, Interestingly, I have realized that in the past when I had Alpha Centauri energy come through, I kind of confused it with sometimes with three different other civilizations, with the Zetas, with the Mantis beings, and with the like benevolent reptilians, okay, benevolent reptilians. And like, why? Why would I confuse Alpha Centauri energy with any of those? Specifically, I think the Zeta, because all of these three civilizations and the Alpha Centauri, something we have in common is that they are more... Um, more in their mental body, more mind-based, more uh, masculine, right? And specifically with the Zeta, a very high interest in t advanced technology, right? So I have kind of gotten that muddied, but I'm starting to distinguish it. The Alpha Centaurians, in my mind, um, it, it's really about applied technology in order to benefit the evolution of our consciousness and applied technology that's to make our lives easier, right? And I do, I have noticed in many private readings that... Um, if your connection to advanced technology primarily comes through the Zeta, like Zeta connections, or um, through even um, traumatic connections to like experiences with Zeta, if you don't resonate as being Zeta yourself in a, in another life, if you've had dealings with the Zeta, you can you can inherit um, fears of event advanced technology through the Zeta because the Zeta essentially uh, almost destroyed their planet by becoming so. Um, distracted by technology so the zeta ha like harbor this deep-seated um like ptsd kind of about it, advanced technology even though they are so highly technologically skilled right i don't get that from the alpha centaurians for me the alpha centaurian connection to technology feels more like i don't feel like they have this damage i don't i don't feel like there's this this trauma deep inside of the alpha centaurian collective consciousness i think because they're civilization was very deeply spiritual and they've actually had a pr I'm not saying that they never had any challenges or any missteps right but I think overall I'm willing to bet that the Alpha Centauri consciousness has been largely successful in having benevolent and like wise and ethical 
dealings with advanced technology and that they really see they know they know how to use it for the advancement of our of our consciousness in a benevolent and useful way and so the Alpha Centauri consciousness to me is more about applied advanced technology and I keep thinking about virtual reality and augmented reality I think that's going to be a huge uh, a huge thing coming up over the next you know few decades right as VR and AR become way more mainstreamed until the day when we're all walking around um, with our AR goggles on right or whoever however it plays out that feels strongly to me like Alpha Centaurian energy and even like video games, <laughs> video games. Oh, okay. So put a pin in that. Um, what's going on with this seven of swords? <laughs> so <laughs> this seven of swords, I love because this is somebody who was trapped in a box. This guy was, was in a box and someone was stabbing swords through the box. And this being shatters their prison. He busts out of the box and runs off. That really, I mean, that just describes my memory of being in a like POW camp, right? And escaping, right? Escaping, busting out, busting out. And also connected with this um, general, I feel it, it's going to be kind of low key, I think, but there's this like percolating Alpha Centaurian awakening that's going to be coming up in different ways over many, many years, right? Many, many years this is happening. People busting out, busting out. And this is like, uh, a release from internal suppression is the way I want to put it. A release from internal suppression. It's almost like this box isn't actually something outside of you. It is something that was inside of you and you're breaking out of it now. Um, this is pretty similar to Eight of Swords energy, but it, this is more of, the Eight of Swords is more of like releasing those internal limitations. The Seven of Swords is more like busting out because it's a seven. It's about expansion. It's about expansion. It's about blasting out, having something erupt inside of you reclaiming your sovereignty and going like no i don't have to make do with this i don't have to make do with this i can go bigger i can go for better i don't have to make myself small i don't have to make myself small so i i do actually i'm just thinking about the people like friends i've had in my past that now looking back i realize I was like wow they were so alpha centaurian right i always do that i always look back and um, identify like starseed connections with different people that i've known um especially people that I met in very strange and mysterious ways and had that instant connection with. It's like they were soul family. I just didn't know it at the time. I mean, I recognized them, right? But I didn't, I wouldn't have described it this way to myself. I didn't have the, you know, the lexicon that I do now. <laughs> so anyway, um, people that I know in the physical, like physical friends that I've had in my past who have this Alpha Centaurian connection often have this um, tendency to make do, to live within their means, to make do, to and to just go, oh, okay, I don't, I don't need, I don't need a lot of money. I don't need a lot of wealth. I don't even need like to travel. I can just, I can just be happy living in a basement suite, working as a janitor for the rest of my life type of energy. And the thing is that might actually be true because the Alpha Centaurians, even though they have this interest in technology, it's like they are deeply spiritual on the inside and it, but it's a kind of like intellectual and mentalized spirituality. And that is all beautiful and has a lot to, is really important and has a lot to teach us, especially since it helps us, um, it helps us live a satisfying life when we are legitimately in restricted circumstances, such as being in a prisoner of war camp where I was sitting there going, okay, I just need to become okay with where I'm at, right? I just, I can make do with this. I can make do with this. I don't need anything more than this. I can be happy while being a prisoner of war type of thing. Um, but that energy is obviously <laughs> not beneficial for the growth of your consciousness when it, it is like, this period of earth, right? When we are on this rapid process of expansion and the, you're actually here to go big, to dream big, to transform and to go for more and more and more. Um, I, I feel like this is um indicating like any tendencies that you have inside of yourself to just go, I can just be happy where I'm at forever. I don't need to go bigger. I will just go smaller. And also this is like being um overcoming in intimidation right intimidation going oh i don't i, I don't know what i'd do with a million and with a million dollars if i won a million dollars tomorrow i would just have to pay taxes with it and i'd be stressed out that type of thing it's like being afraid of success even almost like feeling like success or a lot of money or suddenly getting a job um that that would be really beautiful and powerful for you but maybe you'd be like oh it's just too much of a hassle it's all those things kind of like looking at looking at success as a negative looking at wealth as a negative um, 
even putting yourself out there as a leader, as, as a negative, like starting to see the negatives of success and just going, I'm just gonna stay small because that's easier. That is like a very big theme I'm seeing here. And this is like blasting out of that. This seven of swords is the moment when you realize, no, I'm gonna go big. I'm gonna go big. I, like, why was I keeping myself, why was I keeping my, my consciousness small in this way? And it's really because playing out these past energies, right? And it's like, no more, no more, no more. Time to go big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all this while this Starman card was sitting underneath. This is the magician, right? This is number one, the magician energy, but how much more powerful is it with this beautiful Starman, right? This is not only realizing who you are on a deep soul level, right? And this goes beyond your starseed connections, right? This goes to the most primordial aspects of your consciousness, realizing who you really truly are, even realizing that all of this stuff about Alpha Centauri and any other starseed connections you have, it, it that's just like the middle of the game. That's just this middle level. You go so much more beyond that. You are this transcendent consciousness, right? And you, you are realizing that you're waking up to that and you are downloading that, braiding that into your consciousness on earth, into your human body and realizing you can manifest anything in this life, right? This is, this is magician energy, the master manifester to manifest the life of your dreams and to go big. It's like, go big or go home. And you're not going to go home because you came here to go big. You came here to go big. <laughs> you're not ready to go home yet. You have more to do on this earth. <sighs> lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up. Ooh, the devil. <laughs> okay, I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, some of you might have heard me rant before about how I don't, I don't typically see the devil as, you know, oppression and addiction and blah. I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes it does come up that way. That is part of the devil energy, but re really like, Definitely not with this card, definitely not in this situation. So <laughs> this devil energy is like learning to thrive in the messiness of life, learning to thrive in the messiness of life and even learning to thrive in, and enjoy energies that you previously found intimidating or scary. This is like, reminds me of somebody who, um, like I, I know people, like friends um, that I've, you know, kind of lost touch with, but friends that I have had nevertheless, um, you know, kind of being like 25 years old and have never had a beer before because they're like afraid that having a beer would be bad or like they're afraid if they have a, have a drink that then they'll become a, like an alcoholic and stuff like that. And people, um, you know, I'm talking about people who are like in their 20s, even like later in their 20s, maybe even their 30s, like it doesn't matter. Like I'm not talking about 18 year olds where that kind of thing might be more common, right? Talking about people who are uh, a little bit older, um, and still having these feelings of being afraid of participating in life, in, in, like like having a beer or somebody who maybe um, has really been uncomfortable going on dates or, you know, opening themselves up to intimacy with their partner, something like that, um, or even being afraid of traveling. It's like, it's not really afraid. Afraid is not the right word. It's not really a fear thing. It's like intimidated or being worried that of being, being concerned about the slippery slope and this thing of, oh, I'll just keep myself on the straight path. I'll just stay straight laced. It's like, I don't need to go out drinking. I don't, I don't even need to stay home and have a glass of wine with dinner. I just don't need that. Why would I, why would I do that? I just don't need to do that. I'll just keep it straight and easy. It's this feeling of just keep it straight and easy. I'll just stay on the straight edge, right? But it's like, no, now is the time to actually experience the messiness of life. It's like, okay, so, so what? Maybe, you know, if you're 25 years old and you've never had a drink before and you get invited to a party and you go to the party and you kind of, and you start drinking and you loosen up and you realize you start to like it and you get drunk and maybe you end up throwing up in someone's bush. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's okay to actually allow yourself to have those messy experiences and to not feel bad about it, to know even if you get too drunk and you throw up in someone's driveway, it's like, it's okay. Nothing bad actually happened there. Maybe it was a little embarrassing, but you know what? Those other people at the party, they've all puked in someone else's like bushes too. It's it's okay. It Nothing bad actually happened. You might, <laughs> you might have this internal feeling of self-judgment and feeling like you did something bad, but it's like, it's not bad to get okay to live, to do the messy thing, right? Um, for some people, this could even be like exploring casual sex. <laughs> if, if like you've never done that before, but maybe you feel like you want to get on tinder it's like it's okay it's okay to do that allow yourself to have these these messy human experiences so part of this is going to be um dropping out of the judgment you've had for these kind of messy human things right like 
like like drinking or casual sex or like smoking weed um just like even going to a party going to a dance club like doing things that you might have before seemed where you might have categorized them as superficial or silly or just why would you bother or like oh that's a slippery slope you know if i have a drink next thing i know i'm going to be a heroin addict well it's like it's not like that right you're, you're, it's not going to it's not going to go that it's not going to go that far it's fine this is like loosen up and get your groove back type of energy and really allow yourself to explore messy human experiences this is really important because there's some aspect of yourself that you have repressed right that you have repressed and it's that the joy of human life the joy of human life the joy of the messiness of human life and knowing that it's okay to just cut loose and live a little right and that can be as like small or as big as you want it to be um i mean i really went through an experience like this uh like you know when i was like 23 24 when i read a book by Dan Simmons, this, this book called Flashback. And in the book, there's this drug flashback that everybody is taking and it allows you to relive memories from your past. And this, this book changed my life, okay? Because I realized that I had been repressing myself and my life, I had been repressing my life experiences. I, w I didn't go out, I didn't do anything, I never had any fun. And uh, I realized that I didn't have any memories that I would like to relive. I, I had this entirely like one of those like come to Jesus moments, right? I was like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? I have literally no memories that I would like to relive. And even though I had some good memories, right? I wouldn't actually want to relive them because I was typically, even on a day when I like went to a roller coaster park or something, I was typically kind of, I was just always depressed or stressed or anxious. And I was like, well, I wouldn't actually want to relive that because even those good moments, they were kind of soured by my own fear, by my own insecurities, by my own anxieties and all my own depression and all that. And I was like, oh, Oh my god i need to make massive changes in my life like right now and i i, I like i started i kind of lost it i went pretty off the deep end for a couple of years there um <laughs> because i was like i need to live my life i need to cut loose i need to let go i need to explore i need to create memories i need need, need to create memories and this is like this is that like i i, I went through this you know nine years ago <laughs> eight, ten, nine ten years ago 2012 basically that all started for me in 2012 and I was like I need to change my life I need to create memories I need to live I need to live I, even if even if like I end up like I, I spent quite a bit of money you know I spent a little bit too much money I drank a little bit too much um I had some very strange I got myself into some very strange situations um I lost like a lot of weight like really fast um which was I thought I thought was good at the time but in hindsight I see that that was why my mother was so alarmed right um but you know nothing bad happened nothing bad happened I, I, I was I was not hurt I was not harmed I just really kind of allowed myself to live on the wild side for a while. And since I was able to navigate that, and I, I I know that you guys are the same way, right? You don't need to worry about going too far. You're not because you you have this solid internal compass and you will know when you're taking it too far, right? You're, you're, if you're like suddenly cutting loose and going partying or something or going traveling, or even if you're just like quitting your job and you're just gonna like live the gig work lifestyle and just live in a much more looser fashion or like gonna move into a van and just like toodle around, right? whatever, however that plays out for you, whatever cutting loose is for you, right? I know you're not going to, like, you're not going to get yourself into a, into a, any kind of serious problem um, because, <laughs> you, because you have an entirely different baseline, right? You are, you are responsible, you are secure, you are stable, you, and you, you know what too far would be. And the funny thing is that, you know, the things you might consider really wild and really out there for other people are like completely mundane and more and boring and blase. So you're you're not going to take it too far. I absolutely 100 million percent believe and know and trust that you that you will know how to navigate your unwinding. You will know how to navigate your um walk on the wild side with safety and security and you're not going to take it too far so don't don't worry about that just allow yourself to unwind a little bit in whatever way that is for you okay i think that's actually the end of the tarot cards let's get one of these because you need to allow yourself to transform right you need to choose transformation choose transformation choose life <laughs> it's like choose life choose life choose feeling alive choose life choose feeling alive walk on the wild side just a little bit allow yourself that messy experience of life 
Yes, allow yourself expansion. Jupiter with abundance, right? It'd be interesting. You can check to see if you're having any significant transits, like either Jupiter transiting something or transits to your Jupiter, right? What's going on with Jupiter? That is the area of your life that is expanding. This is, and oh, I was going to say so Jupiter would be associated with the number seven. And luckily the author actually wrote the number seven on here, right? Seven, seven, <laughs> seven, seven. So expansion and expansion. This is the time of your life where you expand and don't repress your expansion. Don't hold back on your expansion. Allow yourself to expand. And as you expand, it, it, it there's going to be messiness, right? You could have credit card bills. You could you could end up being hung over. You could end up with some really kind of embarrassing and funny stories about what happened on your strange adventures. But it's like all of that is okay. That's really the point here. Get okay with the messiness of your life. Get okay with the strange experiences you have. No one's judging you. The only person judging you is yourself, right? I actually guarantee you, um, once you cut loose a little bit, you might think that your whatever happened, like if you if you cut loose and then realize, oh, like what happened that was kind of embarrassing and weird, but it's like it's not. Other people will actually find you more relatable and more human. And once you start having, <laughs> once you start having more adventures, right? People will find you more relatable and more human, and you will find that people will actually like like laugh with you about your funny stories. And they'll be like, yeah, like, I'm so glad you decided to cut loose. And some people will even be like, wow, I've been waiting for you to relax and like, let go and like, get your groove back all of this time. And it's going to be really, um, really beautiful. It's going to like, allow you to have more human connections that you have probably always secretly been looking for, but never really knew how to have because honestly, you were maybe a little bit uptight, <laughs> you know, and I say that as somebody who has absolutely been quite uptight in my life. So, you know, from one to another. Neptune. Oh, this is, this is really interesting. Um, because I'm actually filming this on, uh, March 14th, 2022. Um, yesterday the sun was conjunct Neptune. And, um, so there was, there's some, at least for me, there's something about this Neptunian portal. Um, and it, this is all in Pisces, by the way. Um, something about this Neptunian portal was bringing through this Alpha Centaurian activation for me. And the, uh, the Akashic record reader who kind of really snapped this into place for me, um, as a Pisces moon. So I don't, I don't know <laughs> why there is this Piscean Neptunian connection with Alpha Centauri. I don't know if, I don't really think that that's a, I don't really think that's a thing in general. That is just the portal through which this activation came to me and it's coming up for you guys as well right whenever you're seeing this something to do with pisces energy and neptune energy is helping you awaken up to this and this theme of sacrifice right this theme of sacrifice <laughs> coming back to my stories at the very beginning where you know i was talking about how my alpha centaurian self was kind of blocked even from recognizing itself it's like it couldn't recognize itself it couldn't see itself and my brief flashes of memories from alpha centauri basically involve the sacrifice of myself right sacrificing myself and it's like this interesting dance between you know, as we walk our spiritual journeys, we do seek, most of us, <laughs> right? Um, naturally, there is a dissolution of the ego, right? Your ego softens so that you can connect more with your higher self. There is a natural um, softening and release of the ego as you raise your frequency, right? Um, and my memory of being standing in that I was going to call it a savanna, <laughs> so we'll, I guess we'll roll with that. This this savanna, this Alpha Centaurian savanna, and I had this because like tuning into the energy of that planet was so strong it made me want to dissolve myself to an extent that I, I think my human self anyway sees that as an almost unhealthy level, right? It's like I wanted to sacrifice myself. There was something about that planetary energy or at least my connection to it that made me like really desire to self-sacrifice and um this energy is playing out in your lives in some way so feel into that feel where does like martyrdom where has that been coming up for you where, where have you sacrificed yourself um you know this could be sacrificing yourself for others always helping others too much helping others to the extent detriment of yourself but i feel like this is almost sacrificing yourself 
for yourself, like sacrificing your desires, sacrificing your hopes, sacrificing your dreams, sacrificing your expansion, sacrificing your abundance, sacrificing your participation in life, sacrificing your participation in life because life seems intimidating, right? And this is like, stop, stop it, <laughs> stop it. Um, you know, coming back to this whole thing about allow yourself to expand, allow yourself to manifest, allow yourself to go big and allow yourself to have the messiness of life. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. What did I just say? Allow yourself to transform, right? Allow yourself to transform. I transform. This is the moment. This is your moment where you transform out of all of these self-imposed limitations. And it's interesting, in one way or another, many of these limitations you've been carrying around since your lives in Alpha Centauri and um, in releasing, in transforming these limitations, these internal limitations, you are helping the Alpha Centaurian collective transform as well. And that is... Um, I'm seeing like all of these jars opening, like all these portals opening, everything is opening, 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 all of these. <laughs> it's, I'm literally seeing like a, somebody opening jars and out of the jar comes this like swirling portal, like, like a, wow. Okay. Now my third eye is really throbbing and I'm getting shivers. This is, that got intense really fast. Um, whew. Can you feel it between your hands? like this like swirling ball of like the swirling ball of energy a swirling ball of energy and there's many different colors and there's all these different jars and we can open the jars up and let these swirling balls of light out and but they're like very electric they're not they're not just light as in like glowing sunlight right it's like electric light electric light these balls of electric light and that's like almost can see like the you know like the picture when people like draw textbook pictures of an atom with like all the electrons swirling around it's they look like that very electric very intense they're coming out of these jars or like we're letting them out of these jars we're letting them out of these containers you know actually just like the seven of swords we're letting them out we're letting them out so that is a big deal we're activating these, we're opening up these, so there are light, code cont light codes contained inside of these balls of electricity. We've been carrying them around inside of our light bodies, but they've been sealed away from us. They've been sealed away from us. Okay, so, um, wow, um. This is I don't think all Alpha Centaurians have this, but if you're watching this, then you <laughs> um, we we um I'm trying to figure out exactly how it started. It, it's like our Alpha Centaurian aspect. With the assistance of our Alpha Centaurian star family, it's like we sealed away these Alpha Centaurian light codes. We sealed them away. That's what the jar is. We sealed them away and then we stored them in our light body. But even though, you know, we, we all have like all these codes stored in our light bodies all the time. Um, some of them are active, some of them are not. So these ones have not been active. They haven't because they've been sealed in a jar, right? Or they've been like hermetically sealed in some way. The jar is the symbol. And <laughs> right now, <laughs> from what I just... Um, when I just saw this and I opened it up, now mine, mine anyway, has come out of the jar. It's come out of the jar. It's it came just right now, two minutes ago, came out of the jar, and now it is this ball um, of light. And I'm gonna invite it to settle into my light body and to activate. <laughs> and now, now that it's, um, I can feel its energy flowing, flowing, flowing. It is con contributing new Alpha Centaurian, a new flow of Alpha Centaurian energy into my light body. It is now flowing freely in my light body. But that's why before I, it was like leaking almost. I w it was starting to leak out. I was starting to uncover these memories from Alpha Centauri and stuff, but I couldn't quite make the connection because my Alpha Centaurian light codes are at least this particular group of codes that is stored in this electric ball of light was sealed away and I just now, <laughs> while making this video, opened it up and unleashed it. And that's all you have to do um, if, if you want to do this. I mean, it's some of you, it's some of you had already happened accidentally, <laughs> unintentionally, uh, just from watching the video and just watching me like fumble through this strange experience. Um, others of you, you can ask for it to 
open right now, you know, just say I want to unlock and open um, my Alpha Centauri and light codes, the ones that are of my, for my highest good and most relevant for me to access right now, I would like to invite them to integrate fully into my light body and allow them to flow into my experience, right? You can say that, you can say something like that, doesn't matter, you don't need to make it more complicated than it is. You can also do this when you're um, falling asleep tonight, if that feels like a better time for you, and it's going to be flowing and flowing and flowing. And this is going to allow different things to unlock over the next several years, because there are, it's funny, there, there are codes in there related to the advancement of technology on Earth. And I mean, if you happen to work in tech, right? You might have it like a very hands-on um, way of bringing about some of these technological shifts. Um, I know I don't work in technology, so I'm not going to be doing anything particularly hands-on unless my life changes extremely drastically with very big surprises all of a sudden. Um, but it doesn't matter. You're going to be emitting these codes anyway, just as you walk around um, and as you share your light, as you shine. Right now, now that the codes are flowing freely in your light body, they're going to be easily rippling out into the collective and basically allow yourself to dream big in terms of how you would like to see technology change in the future. And you don't need to have any worries about, um, you know, fears of advanced technology because these codes are, they're about the benevolent use of advancement of technology, right? They're the benevolent use. The, the Alpha Centaurians, they know, they know about the pitfalls of advanced technology and they know how to steer around that. They know how to make sure that, techno that technology advances in a benevolent and useful and productive way for humans, right? And so just dream, dream up, dream up, dream up what you would like to see, what would make your life easier, what kind of technology would make your life easier and just allow yourself to dream it up. It's gonna get put out there and come back to you in a very funny way. Just like the other day, my husband and I were just kind of, you know, daydreaming and, and ranting. And I was like, you know what I need? I need a food printer. I need to be able to go to like the food printer in my kitchen and like order up any, any dish, right? And to just have it like put in my like molecule ink and have it like print out exactly what I want. <laughs> um, and I was like, that, that's what I need. And sure enough, a week later, so they haven't come up with a food printer yet, but there is a just announced a uh, drink printer. They like send you like cartridges of, you know, molecules or something. I don't, I don't know the details of how this thing works and you just put it in and you can, the, the machine can literally, you know, print, can make or print any, any, like it's something like 10,000 drinks or something. I don't remember exactly, but it, it, it was basically what I had been dreaming up, what I had been asking for. Um, but you know, maybe we're not quite there about printing cheeseburgers yet, but maybe we are there to be able to print different types of drinks, right? <laughs> and so that that's a really perfect example of how just dream these things up and then they start to come then they start to come um yeah so that was highly unexpected <laughs> so let's all go have lots of fun activating first of all unlocking and then activating and then integrating our alpha centaurian light codes it's going to be very interesting and I'm excited to see new advancements in technology that are for our highest good, right? For our highest good that make our lives better, easier, and more awesome all around. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.